Well, back then, I, you know, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have even thought it wasn't even in my wildest dreams to be thinking that I would be making whiskey. In 1982, I was actually supposed to go to Zimbabwe, and two weeks before uh, I was due to leave the UK, uh, they cancelled my contract. And one of my teammates was Peter Kirsten, so I asked Kersey if he could help me get a late change to my program. He phoned Stellenbosch University, they contacted somebody in this town called Wellington, and two weeks later, here I was. Uh, mainly coaching in the beginning and then I got the opportunity to play for Bulan. Uh, what was nice was that I could actually hold down a, a position in South Africa, a working position and still get the time off to play cricket. Uh, but yeah, since then I, I coached at schools like Bulan Lambo School where Stian van Sale, who is now a, a Protea a cricket player, I'm glad to say that I had a, a very small role in, in the success he's achieved. I got the opportunity in 1986 and I spent six months working with a company called Morrison Beaumont Distillers. I worked at their Glengarry, their Ockentoshan and their iconic uh, Beaumont Distillery on the island of Isla. And I think it was while I was there that, that I realised that this, this was a profession I, I could really enjoy. Uh, came back to South Africa over the next three years, did again trips to Scotland just to continue to increase my knowledge. And in 1990, the company approached me and said, listen, would I be interested in changing the, or transferring our small whiskey operation in Stellenbosch to the James Cedric distillery at Wellington, where we still are, and where I'm now into my 25th year, and only the sixth manager of that distillery since 1886. It's a very subjective product where in the past we were probably told that you had to drink it just with ice or a dash of water that's how our, our parents and our grandparents drank it but now really whiskey is so flexible so versatile that if it's a hot day in South Africa then mix it there's no reason why not and I think that's what's encouraging a lot of people to the to the category it is a totally natural product it's water it's grains it's yeast uh, you're not allowed to add sugar or flavorings so, you know, if you drink it responsibly, it is, a, it is a healthy form of alcohol. We released South Africa's first single malt whiskey back in 2003. That was a major uh, move in, in, in our country. I mean, we were seen as, as almost imitation Scotch uh, producers at that stage. So we, we decided to break away from the tradition, create styles of our own, uh, we've released South Africa's first single grain whiskey as well and this one being South Africa's first single cask uh, finish. In other words, what that means is it's a whiskey which has been matured in just one specific cask, in this case PX, Pedro Jimenez, a Spanish white grape varietal which uh, creates an intensely dark and sweet sherry and it just complements the, the whiskey. So this is probably the most exciting of, of, of all the firsts I've been fortunate to, to, to have in my career so far. I think South Africa at the moment is the sixth largest consumer of whiskey in the world, uh, which is, you know, I don't know whether we should shout about that or be a bit, a bit worried, but, but it's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> 